that a camera? Yeah, I'm sorry. Kind of. <laughs> Hi, I have several short, fairly short phones. The first one that my therapist helped pick me up, pick me out, pick out, is called Maker. So still she sits and listens to him, absorbing every word. There is a strangeness to her silence, as if she fears breaking his flow. She thinks he is a genius. He thinks she is beautiful. The way she listens to him with her head cocked to one side. There is something breathless about how they relate, a tangible quality that hangs in the air. In the dark depths of the night, they keep each other company from afar. There is no entanglement, rather a lingering. When one dies, the other will be rooted. This is a certainty. <laughs> the next one is called Underneath. Underneath the pain, there is prosperity, and beneath the shame, there is courage. The daisy grows despite the drought and the mule bears his load diligently. In truth, there is nothing humanity won't do for what they believe in. Even if that means they believe in nothing, then they are doing everything in their power to achieve nothing. In the past, our planet was full of mismatched countries. We are swirling together to create a whole. It spins like a galaxy. This is a special time in our history, a turning point. We need to recover from the labor we put into it. Let the next generation have a place to breathe. In the space we created, there is less value placed on the intellect. Our most valuable possession is our home. I won't preach about the environment. This is not a science fiction novel, and we are not moving to Mars. This is called God. Today God found out I existed. He never consciously knew I've been here for 27 years. Somewhere in the back of his mind, or in a corner of his heart, he felt me. But he wasn't truly aware of me until today. He looked at me with surprise. He knew I was one of his children, but such a strange example. And how had I done it without his even knowing? He was very confused. God came to me on a sunny day dressed as some vagrant. His beard was full and partially white. His face dirty and sun-kissed. He wore soiled, tattered clothes. His eyes appeared as a color unknowable to the mortal eye. One person might see green, another would see blue, and yet another hazel. But more than an L.A. vagrant, he looked like he had just come from a journey through the desert with his son. There was something about his confidence and scrutiny that belayed his age. He looked at me without fear or apprehension, questioningly. People tend to think that God knows of every human being alive, that he thinks of them or cares about them. Today I realize that he only notices you if you come to his attention. If you don't believe in God, that may be because he gives you no attention. If you want to believe in someone who doesn't care about you, then believe in God. If you want to get God's attention, then go to the devil. The devil is expert at getting God's attention. God and the devil are rivals. If you are a useful tool to either of them, they will fight over you. This can be fun, unless you get ripped apart. I choose to believe in something different. I refuse to rely on God or the devil. I choose not to go to heaven or hell. And I shall remain here for no one else's purpose save my own. When I am done, I will spread my wings and fly away. Forever. All right, um, this is called She Explores. She touched the piano keys tentatively and played a tune from her childhood. She stood in front of an empty pool and clapped to see how it would sound. She fingered the storybooks and licked her finger to turn the pages. She walked through the rummage sale and played with the tiny carousel. She plucked a bell, looked through loose photographs, flipped the pages of a book and an owl stared back. She wanted a donut. 80 cents, said the clerk. Mmm, it's delicious, her mouth was full. Her red sweater was Scandinavian. She asked her boyfriend, do you like being here? It's okay. She wanted to hold hands with him, but he didn't want to. 
She wanted to know what he did when he liked someone. He said, I like to touch. He stroked her leg and she asked, is that all? She liked to explore. And this is the last one. It's called healing. Healing. Healing is a gift. Hands held over navel and face. Blue ethereal hands that glow with silent energetic power. They open the lotus at the center of the heart. The lotus opens without being touched, merely roused. When the healing begins, the truth comes out. It explodes like a deadly bomb going off, a bomb manifested over many years. My finger has been on the button for some time, that red, evil-looking button. I finally pressed it for someone to see what was inside. The aftermath is still spreading. When you least expect it, you find you're living on the edge of a precipice. You look off into empty space in shock and horror. Maybe you don't want to be this close to the edge. Step back and go home. Thank you.